Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Fusion 360 Increment webinar course series. And today we have an amazing session. Let me give you a quick walkthrough. When you start using Fusion 360 and Fusion Team to put your company to a total team collaboration. Now, somewhere it's very easy to fall into a routine and not get a chance to see what the new features do to help you incorporate into your daily workflow. And in today's webinar, we have Ramesh Budale with us, who will be demonstrating an insightful workflow on remote collaboration using Fusion 360. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Ramesh. So glad to have you with us. Good afternoon, Varun. I'm fine. How about you, Varun? Doing very good. Thank you. So shall I share my screen? Varun? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I hope you can see my screen here. So uh, good evening, uh, good evening. Uh, Everyone and uh, welcome to today's uh, increment uh, webinar on Fusion 360, uh, Fusion 360 teams, remote collaboration, transforming today's challenges into tomorrow's opportunity. So before we go further, I think please review the functionality of the Zoom webinar. So your active uh, participation uh, is important throughout the session. Uh, so uh, as Varun introduced me, uh, uh, Ramesh Shankar Kudale and my look after India education program in manufacturing space for in, in space for autodesk um, so well, in today's uh, you know agenda uh, we have i think all of you have uh, taken a step into fusion 360 software and uh, now uh, we are uh, you know uh, focused on fusion team to put all your company on the right path to the team collaboration uh, you know however uh, you know uh, some uh, you know, some designers or the companies have still, uh, you know, following the, the, the traditional workflow. So now in today's webinar, you'll get a chance to see something new, amazing features in and, and how you can, uh, you know, incorporate them into your uh, daily workflow. It's a really exciting. So, uh, you know, let's have these new features and new updates for the Fusion team, uh, you know, for everyone. Uh, now uh, let's you know, talk about the, the fusion platform because everybody you know started learning the fusion in the past webinars and uh, i hope all of you know that fusion really you know enables true end to end product developments uh, but if you look at uh, you know the customers uh, you know in in day to day life uh, they use uh, you know simple emails uh, you know to copy the data the, the customers also use the FTP servers, the Dropbox, the people also use the, uh, the OneDrive or the Box. You know, however, those, those solutions are not the CAD pair. So that's the interesting part because this is not the CAD pair and they can't handle, uh, they handle properly the CAD references. Uh, so when you're sharing such data, uh, uh, such data uh, which lead to a lot of uh, loss of information, and it is essential that the right, the right CAD files are made available at the time of, uh, uh, at, at the right time, and that can be exchanged with the ease of regardless of their size and the number of documents. So let's take out the, uh, let's to, uh, you know, understand the different types of, uh, you know, the native file formats, which comes from the different file formats, comes from different CAD softwares, and uh, there are different, <clears throat> the, the environments of the features like the optimization, it comes from CA data. The data also comes from the CAM, you know, on this particular platform. So it is, you know, very important for everyone to understand the data management and the collaboration features. Okay. Now, uh, all these features, when you, when you look at all these features, you know, uh, the, the platform which also enables is available on Windows as well as on Mac. So therefore, we have a unique benefits uh, which comes uh, from from both the plat from the both the platforms. Now let's let's understand the fusion team. Uh, uh, you know a little deeply. Uh, the one is uh, when you when you look at the fusion team, which actually expands the Fusion 360's capabilities. Like for example, when you have the CAD files in one place, you know how we can search those files or just look at the like uh, how you can view all these 2D and 3D models with all the zero install viewer, okay? Which means you know, how you can use the browser and the mobile devices to do a design review 
you know, and how you can do a collaboration, how you can share and publish all your design data with the different documents on the collaborative platforms. And the most important is the discussion, right? So the discussion is like, you know, you can track the conversations with all the project folders. Now, so, you know, you know the whole uh, you know, scenario, what is important is the clear ownership of your data, right? So, and most important is also you need to understand the roles and permissions at the team and the project levels. So we're going to discuss, you know, in the, in the coming slides, and also we will also look at the, what is the access and to the desktop app connectivity. Uh, also, we will also explore the data organization, what is the flexibility with cross reference project references. So that's also important. And also we look at the integrated associativity workflows with AnyCAD. So we'll also introduce these, the AnyCAD collaboration in the, in, in the, in the Fusion team. So, but let's understand the definition. What is the Fusion 360 team? Uh, it is it is a centralized source of all uh, you know all for your project collaboration needs. Uh, but it is like it is it is an integrated data storage and data management, and of course a collaboration inside of Fusion 360, uh, which basically includes creating and managing the projects, which primarily also includes sharing your project data, reviewing and discussing your designs. That's not something you know, interesting. We also see the live discussions today, you know, during this webinar, you know, uh, in, in different stakeholders. Then also we track, you know, all the project updates. That's not something, uh, you know, really essential for everyone, for all the stakeholders, for various companies, how you can track those updates. And the most important is when you tracking this, you have, you need a lot of conversations and you need a commenting and the markups on these projects. And once you do that, you know, all of these can happen concurrently so that all these stakeholders, all the fellow designers, the different team members in your, so the, or as well as, you know, the third party specialists like manufacturer. So everyone is, you know, in a, you know, in a concurrently working on a similar project, you know, they can track the progress of the project. Uh, you know, in short, uh, it is just like it, it, the, the fusion team acts as a campfire. Uh, which basically brings uh, you know together all of the people and the processes which are associated with your project. So that that's something uh, you will understand in short. But you know, so before before we want to see what is the fusion chain, so let's understand uh, the different uh, the terminology, like right? the different terms that what we're going to use, uh, you know, throughout the session. And these terms are uh, you know again you know you will you you'll you'll find these terms you know frequently. You know on the website uh, you know to, to understand that so let's start with the hub you know what is a hub hub is a site and, and a central place for all your projects that we are going to save and it is also recommended for all the organization so today i'm going to use the autodesk as as the hub you know for me and then uh, we will see the live session from that okay so most of the contract manager as well as you know the the owner or the managers so they can create this so similarly, uh, we have uh, the, the next term, which is called as projects, right? So I'm, I'm continuously talking about this project, but what is a project? The project means it's, it's a working area within the hub, and we're gonna explore the different types of projects as well. Uh, then we also look at, uh, we assign the different types of permissions to these projects. And the most important is you can display as a top level folder in the hub, and as well as in the Windows Explorer. So when you when you open your Windows Explorer, you can see that the the top level you know the folder over there, okay, uh, with with the different types of projects and the Fusion team. Now let's let's discuss about you know the Fusion team features, okay. Now the my session is organized in such a way that you have uh, the Fusion team features, and then I'm going to show you a live demo on how to do it, okay. Um, so the Fusion team features. The first feature is, of course, the data management. So what are you going to talk about? We are creating a different types of projects. We will use the different types of reference designs across the project. So it, it is fantastic to see one project, you know, has a multiple, uh, you know, the connections. Uh, so in the, in, the, you know, in, the, in, the, in the picture also, you can see that. Uh, and you can also see like, uh, you know, who has a file, file open, right? Who has opened the file or we can also see uh, under the project, uh, the different types of roles as well. And uh, under the data management, we have the activity feed, or we are able to manage the different types of versions and get the milestones. So getting into the more on the milestones, a milestone is again, uh, it's, it's you can create and you know consume uh, you know, noteworthy changes, like you, you tag it, 
and then you you get the latest uh, pools you know from the milestone okay so this is this is really going to be a kind of you know, fantastic idea to use the fusion chain uh, thoroughly then we have one more feature where you can recover all the deleted files right like right now for example you're working on some specific projects and deleted some of your few files right so uh, you know uh, it, it's working like your recycle bin okay so get all the, you know get into the browser and just get into the versions which version you want to delete or on a specific file directly once it is deleted it goes into uh, uh, a, a trash okay and then you click on the trash and just push all the deleted data uh, again in your project okay so this is basically recovery okay now one of the feature is the collaboration right so we have the fusion 360 app uh, which is a fantastic all of you have uh, you know take a benefit of that fusion 360 app on your android as well as on ios devices where you can view 2d and 3d designs you can do a markup designs uh, you know, in today's live sessions, we will also show the collaboration between different stakeholders. We can do a design review, comment on different designs, and share the data with the external audience via public uh, links. Okay, so that when you create that link, we have a specific controls on those links. So let's let's get into a demo mode. Uh, let me share my screen again. or let me switch to fusion uh can you see this my fusion screen now hey anand uh ramesh this is the same presentation i think demo okay I okay i need to stop okay sorry all right so uh you can see this is fusion and uh, let me hide my Floating meeting controls. Okay. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, this uh, is good. All right. Thanks. Uh, so we we can see this is I'm I'm the uh, member of uh, you know some of the fusion teams. You can see on the top, and I'm right now currently in a single user storage. Right. So this is something which is interesting because this is my personal legacy uh, account. Uh, you know I'm I'm in now and let me show you where you can exactly go right now uh this is i'm a single you can see there is a small single user storage there's a single human and the on the top right corner also you can see my profile here so i'm just logged in fusion 360 account and uh, let me go to uh, one project okay so this is you can search the projects just by filter okay uh, double click the project you have one more folder and uh, this is primarily uh, the files, uh, you know, of uh, the uh, reciprocating saw. Okay, so the reciprocating saw. We have one more project here. So you can see there's a button where you can open the same files in the browser. Okay, uh, so I'm going to click here. Yeah. So now you can chop. You can see this is a single storage. So therefore. A360 icon will 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 appear over in the browser. Uh, I, I hope Poron, you can see my browser screen as well. I see no, no, no Ramesh, no. Okay, I think I let me. There is an option to do new share. You can just do that. That will be super quick. Yeah, uh, I think desktop share. I guess right. No, 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 new share. Oh, okay. So, when you share something, then you'll get another option as new share. So you can just switch between windows like that. Okay, new share. You have to share something first. Yeah. Yeah, now you can see the new share button also. Got it, got it. Or I'll see ten years. Okay, so uh, this is the project what uh, uh, you can see, you know, because this is the this is the reciprocating saw that I've selected. Now uh, I'm just going into one particular project, which is basically a, a blade card assembly. I can see there are two uh, versions, right? So uh, let's take a look at this. Is this is the you know the assembly the entire the entire interface of Fusion Team? Right now you're in Fusion Team. Uh, but you, you can you can understand this is the overview. Uh, number one is you can see that the blade guard assembly 
is used in a which design like for example the referencing i was talking about the referencing right so the same part is used in this particular uh, project which is called as reciprocating saw then on this button we have these two options right one is if you would like to share this design with someone you can simply click on this you know the button and it allows you to create a link you know and this is the the link which will uh, direct towards your latest version so here we have the privacy settings as well so sometimes you you can want to set a password you can set a your unique password uh, you know for your file because when suppose you are sharing with the external stakeholders or the external manufacturer manufacturing contractors so this is going to be very easy you know uh, you know quickly someone can share this link you can also make it off as well if you don't want you know someone to share so you can you know off your shared link as well uh, you know to cut off your part or visibility you know from your your project on the right you can see the same design i can open in the desktop as well as on the web and on and the next button you can see you can export the same design into different file formats so this is a blade you know guard assembly but you can export to many file formats directly from your browser now on the right hand we also one more option where you can move copy and delete uh, the files or i mean the files which you want to delete or copy or you want to move from uh, this workspace or from this folder to some other folder okay uh, let me show you something interesting so this is the two versions and this is on a single uh, storage uh, platform okay now you can see i can compare these both designs i have two versions with me uh, I just quickly go into a compare versions. Okay, now the new tab will open. Uh, I hope this tab is also visible to everyone. Uh, Varun, can you see the second tab now? Yes, I see versions and these. Things. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have uh, this is a comparisons that I have selected the button, right? So in the design changes, so you might want to compare your different versions. And this is version two and this is version. So I would like to compare version two against version one. And this is the design. So I can click on the compare. And uh, you can see the, uh, the version two assembly here, which, which is notified, right? And then uh, what we can see is if you want to compare, we have this uh, option which allows us to uh, to compare you know different screens as well we can see side by side compare okay so that's going to be super easy for us and then uh, you know you can see the check the distances as well you know here uh, you can measure the the distance in these two variants let's say for example i would like to compare you know with these two versions okay uh the, suppose i am modified this so i can see this uh, design here it's a 2.3. In another window, I can quickly go and uh, measure from this point to this point. Okay, this is 3.0. So, so do you have this amazing controls and uh, you know you can approve here. Uh, you know, apart from this, you can say done, and then done from this, and you can simply switch it to your uh, next side by side style to overlay style. Okay. Uh, so this is this is this is really useful for us to understand the different types of design changes, and uh, there are also also other tools. Like for example, you can do a section analysis. If someone wants to do a section analysis, you know, understand what's going on inside in the browser itself. So you don't have to open the software directly, but with the help of uh, this tool, you can we can also understand the internal details. Okay. So with this, uh, let me switch on to the next part of my presentation. So, okay, so that's, that's the, the slide. So yeah, can I you see the demo, I see the demo screen. All right, all right. It's not in the presenter mode, right? No. Yeah. Thank you. So what we have seen is, you know, uh, you know how to use that, uh, you know, the, uh, the general overview and, uh, you know, how to open in the browser. You know, compare the different versions. Um, then uh, you know we can also see the different types of you know comparison between the blade guard assembly and their comments. Okay, so with this, now uh, 
I'll just move into the next slide, uh, which is basically AnyCat. So this AnyCat, the powerful feature which is available now in Fusion 360, uh, where uh, the Fusion 360 referencing happens uh, with other CAD file formats. Uh, changes, uh, just, just give one second. Sorry. Uh, so this is uh, you know the AnyCAD where we're going to see the Autodesk desktop connector. Uh, so now you've seen in all these product development process, the changes don't break the, the downstream workflows. And we would like to enable the multi-CAD support uh, through this, uh, through this Autodesk desktop connector. So we will see that, you know, how the distributed team collaboration happens through the, uh, the connector. Uh, there are a lot of tedious tasks which are automated, you know, by using the Autodesk desktop connector. So changes are versions and the notifications of all the parametric, uh, the CAD files, what you've seen. So you can see uh, all the changes happen simultaneously. Uh, and uh, we also look at like, you know, the data at the center, uh, as it is at the center, which enables all the automation and the tedious repetition task. And the, the most important, what we can see the benefit is instantaneous notification when the dependency chain detects the changes. Okay. Uh, now this is something which is interesting, you know, for uh, you know, all of us. And uh, uh, let's let's look at the uh, the the Autodesk desktop connector. So now once you install this uh, the uh, Autodesk desktop connector on your laptop, uh, it creates the virtual drive for uh, on um, virtual drive for all of us. And then you can directly open all your work, save all your files. You can go and uh, you know directly and open all your files, all your Fusion team files on your uh, on your laptop. The, the interesting part is if you reference cost reference with other CAD file formats, it's seamless. Now, what do you uh, need to do? You know, when we have when once you install that, uh, the company's contract manufacturer must allow the the, the first allow the user access. Once they have the access, then you know they can go to the Fusion team, sign in into their, uh, with their uh, Autodesk ID, then install uh, in the desktop connector by clicking down from their profile picture within the drive. Uh, we can see, we can see that in the, you know, in the demo. And also you can load up some data and invite all the collaborators to share their data as well as off you can go. Uh, then also you can see uh, within the, uh, uh, Windows Explorer, uh, that's a very simple option where you can go to the Windows Explorer, go to the PC and uh, verify your hub as it's showing. Uh, if it doesn't appear, the simple step, you just have to refresh your drives, okay? Uh, just right click and refresh your drives. So that's, that's the simple process. Now, this Autodesk desktop connector, uh, the, 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 we should know how to download that because uh, we, we cannot directly get the access to the, the install the desktop connector to the Fusion for, for the Fusion, uh, but let's see how, how this will, uh, you know, uh, happen, right? So let me give a small demo of this, okay? Uh, let me share my screen once again with the Fusion or the screen directly. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Okay, of the Fusion. Fusion uh, workspace. All right, thanks, thanks, Arun. So I'll just quickly move into uh, uh, the teams uh, where I'm the member and I have my own team here, my company name over here. So I'll just quickly go and open into the browser. Okay. So I'm talking about the Autodesk desktop connector, how you should get the access of this Autodesk desktop connector. Okay. Now you can see the picture here, you know, in the browser, you see there's a, it's a the icon is changed and this is my company's name. So where I, I can see, which is shared with me and this is owned by me, you know, which are these projects which are owned and I can see the, all the projects over here. So that's a simple interface. And on the right hand side also, I have one more option in the Fusion team where I can create my own project with the different permissions at here. And the right hand side, you can also see my activity feed. So, you know, the, the, the question here which comes is, how do I, how do I install the, uh, or how do I get the Fusion connector? I can click on my profile and I can see the picture here, okay? So it's a basically, uh, uh, you know, Autodesk desktop connector in Fusion. So you just have to click and get the download and 
use this desktop connector. So let me see you on my screen here. Now, under my screen, you, know, you can see in my tray, in my system tree, you can see there is a Autodesk desktop connector built 13.1.0.105. Uh, it's already installed. So I can right click and look at this. Already I have, uh, you know, uh, I'm online. I can, I can go to this uh, connector, see the pending actions. I can refresh the drives and also you can send the feedback. Okay. So if I explore this screen, right, the Explorer, uh, you know, I can go to the uh, My PC here. Under the My PC, you can see the the option, which is uh, you know called as the Fusion 360 uh, connector and the virtual drive, which is already created. So this is going to be your the virtual drive here. And when you click on the virtual drive as well, you know it, it shows the uh, couple of options, which are the projects or which are the uh, uh, the teams, the fusion teams, the under this particular drive. So this is a drive which will, will remain. If you click on this drive, you will see the, again the projects. Like for example, if I create some data in my projects, I can see admin project, assets, demo projects, and research and development projects. So this is something interesting. If you click on this, so you have directly save on your button, right? Save, save all your files on your virtual drive, okay? So with this, I'll just move to the next uh, next slides here. Okay. Uh, so the next is, you know, uh, you know how to use the Fusion Team, and uh, you know how you should uh, do upgrading to a Fusion Team. So normally you have the data on your, uh, you know, your legacy account, and uh, the the big task is how you want to move this data on the Fusion Team. Okay. Uh, the, the the steps are very simple. We uh, the first, you know, uh, we must know how to create the new or the new uh, uh, the team fusion team. Uh, to create the new fusion team, uh, uh, it 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 will ask me in the beginning as well to create what is the name of your fusion team. So uh, we do a specific workflow uh, or the steps we we follow to create the account. We create the uh, you know account. We do verification. Uh, you know happens, and then we move into install and launch Fusion 360 mode. And then when you are onboarding Wizard starts, so in the onboarding Wizard, you can see the it will ask you to the name of your uh, name of your Fusion team. Okay, so. Was that a background music? No, this was uh, a ringtone. <laughs> okay. This is it. So this is again. Yeah. Sorry for that. Uh, so we we create this uh, the interface. What you can see here is uh, even if you have your a team, you can create your team. But uh, the software, the Fusion allows you to create your a uh, single team. Uh, which also made discoverable by the by its administrator, and then if you want to join, uh, you know some of these some other companies, uh, the team. So we have this option which is called as join the existing team. Okay, so the best way to collaborate, you can simply select that team and then join it. So you have the full access and you'll be the part of that particular uh, the particular fusion team with the specific roles and the permissions. Okay. Uh, now let let me you know uh, give you one more uh, in the highlight. What is the difference between single user storage, which is a legacy account, and we have the Fusion account? Uh, so the only primary, the very important difference is about the Cloud Cam libraries. Now when you're talking about the Cloud Cam libraries, uh, you know now someone has uh, you know the access to the Fusion, he logs in, creates his uh, the Cloud Two libraries, and then he just carry all these two libraries uh, you know uh, throughout uh, the fusion team as well as uh, throughout you know his different devices as well you know he just signs in from one system to another systems he, he can carry all the two, you know the cloud two libraries so it's going to be very simple and uh, you know if you look at the other fusion team capabilities are uh, at the team level access permissions administrator member and the contributor at the project level permissions we have the project administrator, editor, and the viewer. So we want to see that how to do that. And you can transfer the team administrator role 
uh, to uh, you know to, to to other team member as well. Like for example, I'm the administrator role, but I can also transfer the same um, uh, the same other role to us to to another team member. Okay. Uh, so cross reference, uh, cross uh, project reference. Uh, that's something which is also important. Reference designs from other projects that we have seen now. Uh, any CAD is not we have we have seen in how to how to use that uh, the Autodesk Desktop Connector and reference all the CAD files via Autodesk Desktop Connector as well. And uh, we'll see how to uh, recover all the deleted files. Okay. Now uh, this, the the interface will remain same, but we have once you delete that button, you will get one more interface here. Okay. Now let's look at you know how you can transfer these files. Okay. So um, if you have a you know scan, you can you can take this URL. Uh, this is basically a URL for the team onboarding. Okay. So where you're going to transfer uh, the files uh, from the uh, uh, from the uh, from the single uh, user account to your fusion team. Okay. Now let me give, you know give the difference. What's the difference? Because uh, you can see this is a single user storage. So I have a specific file. So this drive. Uh, you know, uh, let me zoom this a little bit. And uh, so I have these files on this particular storage. Now I want to transfer to my Fusion Hub. So how do I do this, right? So that's that's something, a simple task. So what I'll do is I'll just click this, uh, the link, right? So this is the, the link, right? So I'm going to use this link. And I'll go to the browser. Oh, let me hide this. And this is this is the link https colon autodesk.sk slash team onboarding. Uh, and this is very interesting. All of you can see my screen here. This is welcome to Fusion team. And now through this link, you're able to transfer your data, uh, you know, from single user cloud account to your Fusion team. Okay. Now. This is basically again a role based and any CAD, you know, all the references almost, uh, you know, uh, it will happen. And then we have all the cross project references, which will be also used here. Uh, I can say, let's go, you know, I'll show for my account here. Now, this, uh, the interface, what you can see here, uh, is on the My Hub. And on the left hand side, uh, it's asking me to uh, select the project projects you want to move to the fusion team so you're going to speak these projects and then you're going to pick this so what will happen is these are all uh, you know destination teams uh, the fusion teams which are available and then uh, you you select this team and then so select this project and you can transfer to your fusion team okay so that's that's really interesting you know for anyone who wants to i uh, quickly move their data on the fusion platform sorry fusion team okay so that's one exercise. Let me go to the next exercise. So the next is, yeah, so what we have seen is the transfer the single user projects to a fusion team, right? And uh, it shows the, you know, the data panel where uh, you, you also allowed to, uh, this one, what I've shown to you right now. So you'll get a full control of your data privacy, any CAD and all the cross project references. So this is going to be very, you know, uh, unique here, upgrading from single user storage to a fusion team. Okay. Uh, and this is a wizard, you know, for everyone. So I hope, uh, you know, this, this demo will, will help you too. Okay. Now I'll show you a demo. Now I'll just quickly move to the, the next, uh, the roles and the permissions, uh, you know, for inviting to your uh, fusion team and how you can edit the, the fusion team roles, okay? Uh, uh, the, 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 the first question comes when we talk about the roles and the permissions of the fusion team. Uh, the interesting part is the fusion team roles and the permissions are uh, given to the team administrator uh, who's going to manage all the team members. Then the team manager, the team member can create the projects and he can view and open the close the project files or the projects. The project contributor, uh, this role has, uh, he can view all the projects uh, they have invited into. Uh, but if you look at the project roles and permissions uh, for, uh, for the uh, project administrator, it can just manage the project. 
uh, editor can view and edit the files. A viewer can view the files. Uh, and if you look at one example I'm giving here is about the fusion uh, team roles in academia. Uh, even if it has the administrator, uh, which could be uh, your the instructor or the person uh, you know from the academic environment, he can manage the team members, manage the projects and the users, and he can also add the administrator as well. But if you look at the team member, uh, which can create the projects and invite the users to a project. So that's that's the difference here. And he can also view and open, uh, not only view, but he can uh, you know see the, all the projects and also he can close the project. But the project contributor uh, is normally the students, right? So they are working on different types of projects for this particular Fusion team roles. So uh, they will be coming as the project contributors work on the projects they are invited into. Now, you know, how we should, uh, you know, invite the people to a Fusion team uh, via browser? So that we're going to see here. Uh, one important thing is, you know, all these, uh, the, the interface, you know, also allows you to invite from the browser as well as, you know, from the Fusion interface. Now, if you are using a Fusion interface and then you will see the people button. So right under the people button, it's easy uh, you know, for us to just type this email address and then it goes to the respective team member so that he can become the part of, the, of your Fusion team, okay? Uh, but you can control all the members' roles and the responsibilities. Uh, so that's, that's really interesting. So we can, I can sure demo this. Now, this is where you can edit the Fusion roles as well. As I mentioned, uh, the interface allows you to uh, do that, okay? So uh, let me let me uh, you know show you a demo on this as well. But here the most important is uh, the roles. When you when you select a particular project with a specific uh, settings, uh, the project could be your closed project. It could be a secret project. Uh, based on that, the members' roles and the responsibilities will change. Okay. Now this is the I mean the 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 project discovery, right? So you, you will see in the, the same structure, uh, which is available uh, in the Fusion team, uh, because when you want to create the projects, uh, there are three types. One is the open projects. Uh, it is open, so normally we use for all the shop floor people, uh, you know, to, to give them access to all the manufacturing needs. Uh, so it is open to all the members, all the members can see, they can join and, you know, be invited. Uh, the project role is uh, the no people for them and project contributors not allowed to create. So that's something you need to understand. But uh, if you look at the closed, all the team members, uh, you know, under this, you have a specific permission. Okay. And we have a secret as well where the project, this is mostly R&D projects where uh, the project members are given unique access and their administrator can manage their permissions and see their updates frequently. So uh, you know, how are going to delete? You will see this type of screen, which is the you know setting of your projects. One is uh, this setting determines you know who can view the projects and the different types of access level, right? So the the, the, the link is same. Like you have the data panel in the data panel, you'll get this button called as open in the browser. You can go to that you know the respective folder, and then you should look at what are the different types of uh, the project settings. So you can make it as open. You can make it closed. So you can see the difference. Open means any team member can ask to join this project, you know? And uh, close means only invited members can access your project. And the secret means only invited members, you know, can see your project, okay? Now, uh, and how do you open the files in Fusion, right? So that's, that's uh, you know, the question which comes in. Uh, you have to go to this, you know, your respective uh, single user storage, or you can go to the Fusion team and uh, you know simply go to the web browser and check uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, check the respective files and click on uh, double click on those files to to access those respective files okay so let me show you the three uh, three types here okay so let me yeah i hope you can screen now see my screen i see okay. your Fusion browser i see your entire desktop Perfect, perfect. Thank you. Thanks for so. Uh, just look at like how to create the projects, right? So uh, let me go to the my company here. Okay, uh, this is this is normally we give the the company name 
as my uh, fusion chain okay uh, so you can the moment when i switch off you can see the changes you know data panel okay now i can go to the home here and would like to create one more project here so let's let's you know understand how to create a project here so there are two ways to create the project so this is a, a rd project suppose you know i would like to create one more project about you know the shop floor or let's say for example the, the manufacturing okay and if i create this as a manufacturing project so i can set the permissions and invite the different members into this project uh, but how do i open this right so that's that's one more question uh, which comes in right so let me hide again this floating panel yeah right so this is where uh, you know you can see there is a button which is uh called as open in the browser uh the moment when i'll open in the browser uh the the based on the logo also you can understand right so you are you are in a fusion chain the f starts from here when you click it goes into the uh at the root level at the home screen and uh, you're you're in this rd project now okay so we have three members here i have invited mr badri rohit as well and i was talking about the different types of roles here right so one is the project admin like for example uh the rohit is editor you know he can see this so before uh, before getting into the roles you know let's try to understand the r d project so i've created this uh, research and development project and i can go to the details of this project by uh, you know selecting this particular button right so you can see this is a setting option over here uh, and i can click here and then i can see the different types of projects here okay now this is important because this setting determines who can view your project and access your data uh, the one is you can have open or closed from so this is only only invited members can access these projects i can make it from a closed project to a secret project because this is r and d project so i can make it a secret project as well okay now if you look at the permissions law okay i i i think the project settings have been successfully updated right i can just uh, hide this uh, settings uh, for the project details and i can go to the different uh, project roles now okay so the person who wants to uh, you know change or edit your design is also editor the person who wants to viewer view the secret project he will be the viewer and if you want to assign this particular uh, rohit as a project admin you can also assign so you can switch from uh, the editor to any one of this role okay so i i can change from editor to viewer okay so you can only view the view the files okay so this is where you can see the content here okay and also i have created one more project i can go to the root level here okay and i can see there is one more project which is called as manufacturing okay i can double click this project uh, and have the one project member which is me but you know i should also know how to, how to, how i should invite the other members okay so i can invite one more member uh let me invite uh, uh let me invite rohit again okay so rohit chandran okay so he's you can you can see this is uh, he is the editor for manufacturing i can send him invitation here directly okay now the moment it becomes you know it it comes here uh, as the as the main person here as the as the project members and then you can change the permissions from here so now what you know is you can invite two ways right so one is you can uh, you know go to the uh, the respective projects like manufacturing and you know there's a button called as people right so i have i can type the email address of the project member and just press the button called as invite it goes to the respective uh, stakeholder and he will be automatically added but i have a full control because i've created the project where i can also option to remove the contributor okay so this is something interesting you know to you know how you can invite the members in the in your fusion team okay so let let's go back again okay uh, the another interface uh, you know i would like to give is we also we have a wiki pages where uh, you can set up uh, the company can set up their website as well okay so next is uh, you know how you can invite the people to your single user storage projects and once you invite uh, the you know uh, the different stakeholders uh, you know in your project so then you can edit the project roles and uh, the project types as well okay so that's basically uh, the access level as i mentioned 
the view or uh, the viewers what is what do you mean by access level is uh, the word once comes to the view it's only he can view it means he can see the files folders and comments uh, when i say it's editor he can edit upload and the download okay so similarly for the project admin as well you know all the rights are given for edit upload manage sharing project admin as well as on view okay so this is this is the the, the access level permissions for single user and then uh, you can also invite uh, this by uh, by fusion interface uh, you know we have this button uh, which is called as people you need to hit this button and enter the email address of the respective stakeholders and uh, you know, just press the button called as invite. Okay. So in all the scenarios, if you want to invite, you know, for the future team, or if you want to invite for single storage, uh, uh, single storage uh, uh, project. Okay. Now this is this is uh, the same thing what I, I spoke about, but the, the here the 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 button or the the way we invite uh, to the project is two ways. One is through fusion interface. And the second way is you can invite to the web browser. Okay, the web browser has also I've shown you how to do that. And uh, uh, you know, in, from the from the fusion interface, I also show you how to enter the, the people name so that he can become the part of your fusion team. Okay. Uh, so with this, uh, uh, I have uh, we have to go to the the very interesting parts. So we're going to show you the live collaboration. Um, so you can see this live. You know, different stakeholders for these companies. Uh, and uh, now this company has you know started working uh, you know on the the casing part and we have three stakeholders right now you know available online mr rohit chandran is the cam en engineer as well as uh, the mechanical uh, designer uh, we have mr badri uh, who is a, a reviewer uh, but right now he is traveling and uh, he is in a different part of bangalore um, so he will he will update on his progress he will come online uh, maybe uh, this the best part of collaboration is he would like to you know use his mobile device you know in the entire project for the TV, you know design review process and we have Mr. Uh, you know Anand Pujari a very senior design reviewer uh, who can give the final comments. So now uh, I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, I would like to uh, you know invite Badri. Uh, hey everyone. Uh, so as uh, Brahmesh mentioned. Uh, I got stuck in uh, Shimoga, that is my native place, it's about 300 kilometers from Bangalore. I do not have access to my laptop at this point, but still uh, I can use my mobile device to access the design to review, right? So there's a Fusion 360 app which you can install on your Android and uh, iPhone. And uh, here is the design, so which is submitted by Mr. Rohit, who is the designer. So what I'm going to do, I'm just trying to uh, view the file on my mobile device this app will allow me to navigate every single corner of this file and with all the aesthetic looks whatever they have given color every single thing and even you can find out the properties of this particular model so uh, while going through this review what i have realized as a designer so uh, i would prefer to have this plot size smaller for the ventilation purpose there will be a motor going to be fixed here so at this particular location and my preference is to reduce the slot size so that there won't be any um, uh, dangerous thing like if you put your finger inside or something like that. So I won't just want to reduce this. So this comment, I'm going to give it to Mr. Rohit. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark up this particular space and uh, I can type text over here, uh, Rohit, can you, Please reduce the plot size. Okay, so I'm going to post this particular comment. So I'm just going to post this and you can see here on the left hand side of my screen, this app is going to post that comment along with the image, nothing but screen capture. So now I go over to Rohit, so Rohit can access this immediately in live. And uh, so now over to Rohit. Uh, please stop sharing, uh, Badri. Thank you, Badri. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.
Hi, hi everyone. So let me check my comment box whether I have any review updates. So let me refresh first. Yes, I got an update from my design reviewer, Badrisa. Yeah, so the Rohit is, is based sort of from Kerala. Right now he is, is working from his laptop and you know trying to modify, you know, based on the comments. So here I got the principal option, the DAP modeling tool, which is very easy to make my modification. So I just took my model, can zoom it. Yeah, the slot is there, so I can select this face, this one, and this one. And as per the requirement of Badris, uh, it should be 5 mm. Yeah, so I can give the 5 mm sharply. Then, yes, it's done. So my job is done. So let me update back to him that my work is done. Okay, thanks, thanks, Rohit. You just save your version. Uh, now uh, let's let's move to the next to senior design reviewer. Mr. Anand Pujari. Hi, Ramesh. Thank you. So uh, let me share my screen. All right. So I'm based out in Bangalore now. Rohit has worked on the design. Hopefully, you are able to see my screen. Let me refresh the uh, design here. So Badri has worked on the mobile. Um, Rohit is working on the desktop. I mean, his laptop. And I'm on a, on a web environment. I mean, of course. And here, you see uh, different versions that has been edited. So let me go back to uh, the latest design that has been worked, the versions. What you're seeing is a Fusion team. Right, let me go back to the um, viewpoint where you will see the model. It's taking time to load. Just give me a minute. Hopefully it will load fast. Come on. So this is what uh, um, Ramesh has explained you about the complete fusion uh, team capabilities. And this is a collaboration work that we are doing, uh, sitting remotely in different locations and trying to work on the same project. Yeah, so here the idea is, uh, you know, this is, this is a part of reciprocating saw. And uh, you know we would like to see like how we can improve the engineering team's uh, product development process. Uh, you know, working remotely from different regions, and uh, you know, we are working on the same part. So here we go. I get my design, and let me look at the comments here. And here you can see that Roit has done and updated. So what I can do is I can also add a command, for example, saying that okay, I just do a markup save my changes and I say, hey Roit, can you add uh, six mm, six mm thread, thread feature to all the holes in the model i just post it and uh, yeah this comment from the browser i'm just posting it to the designer again to from my reviews and i'll stop my share screen and yes. change yeah. it uh Rohit send yeah thanks i think uh Arith, i think quickly just you know yeah i think uh, 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 let me read yeah Anybody read screen without uh, stop sharing? So anybody can share screen in the midway. Okay. Please go ahead, so, Rohit. Yeah. yeah thank, you. thank you. So see here, uh, my next recent reviewer, Anand sir, has commented like, "Hey Rohit, can you add a M6 thread to holes?" Yeah. So let me do that as live. Then uh, let me update him. 
okay shortly so here i need to give a thread so option is like create thread just zoom in so yeah i have given the thread okay so let me add one more thread so you can check it as a modeled one okay sure yeah when you add it to the other just check it as a modeled one so let me check once again the thread so this time i can go with this part so modeled yeah so it's done my part is done so let me save it and update him to update him that i have done my job Okay, great. I think Rohit, uh, the, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks for the entire team in and showcasing the um, you know the uh, the product development process, our uh, live collaboration between the different stakeholders, of, you know of this uh, saw handle casing. Uh, now let me uh, share my screen once again. So you are, you have seen this is uh, going to be kind of interesting story like you know you know all the uh, all the stakeholders you know how they can you know move into different phases of uh, you know product design process and as the design is iterative uh, so uh, you keeps you know creating different types of versions comparing these uh, you know versions and getting those live comments will really help us to change make the changes uh, you know instantly you know all the designs and uh, you know. Uh, you know, make that part, you know, really quickly, you know, or I would say it's a rapid product development, which will happen or uh, which is, it's kind of the best benefit of the entire process. So with these things, uh, I think I have completed and uh, uh, let me uh, see the quick Q and A's. So there's two questions in an assembly say uh, a bike we need to apply different colors as variants is it possible to apply directly change the colors of parts in assembly oh there is again change something yeah uh, it's possible to apply directly change colors of parts in assembly and save it as variants of you know sets for rendering so uh, when we uh, you know say the different colors we uh, we have a command called as appearance which also helps us to uh, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to apply different colors, but in that case, what you as mentioned is, uh, you 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 have to create, uh, you apply the color and save the file. So so therefore, for each save operation, we'll have a separate version, and you can you can manage that. You know, for for uh, for doing the different rendering, but for each rendering, uh, you you should have uh, in a specific file. You need to do a rendering and then save it. You know, uh, you know, in the respective folder. Uh, then there's the next question is when a canvas is inserted in a in a model uh, even through the canvas is hidden in the design environment when i share we will link uh, i share we will link at the 60 the canvas visibility on the web browser is there any option to turn it off yeah so uh, this is where you know uh, so in the in the canvas normally you know in the design process we have the option where you can uh, you know, insert the uh, insert the canvas, and and then uh, you know also insert your conceptual image. Uh, and this conceptual image, you can make it transparent. You can change its uh, you know uh, viewable uh, the angle, or as well as sorry, not angle, but the transparency opacity. You can change it so that you can you know use this uh, whenever required, so that you are continuously see your conceptual image it could be a three-dimensional conceptual image and your 3d part right so that's going to be a you know, fantastic option you can you know turn off and turn on the visibility of the canvas as well so you you can change that as well uh, in the browser uh, 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 we have the option uh, where you can turn on and turn off as well uh, any job opportunities side for uh, for uh, Special for Fusion 360. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, so uh, many such job opportunities are right now. You can you can see for different new startups uh, who are uh, who are you know using this this particular platform, and they are looking for you know the young talented students as well as uh, the the you know the interested candidates with the specific profiles on mechanical designers are 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 uh, you know uh, the opportunities are available.
so uh, for fusion 360 yes i think uh, uh Varun? cool all right so thanks everyone just for your information uh, uh after this session you know we are about to end fusion 360 increment online webinar course series and this was supposed to be a 15 webinar course and uh this was the second last webinar so tomorrow we have another webinar which is specifically for a consumer product development so our friend devashish datta he runs a youtube channel called open green energy and he has like he has done pretty good uh, in making the diy videos for uh, making self sustainable products uh, the name says it all right open green energy he has got more than like 100k followers he's like very active on instructables so tomorrow we have a session with him and debushi is going to share a workflow in which we will design a diy solar lamp using led lights some electronic pcbs and a solar uh, uh, ch charging panel it's going to be an amazing session it will also cover the great aspect of electronic cat to mechanical cat integrated workflow so the only session we have which i'm very 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 also again very excited so feel free to join tomorrow i again want to thank you for giving time and your valuable commitment towards this course last but not the least as you know this is the right time to subscribe to fusion 360 we are running a 50 percent off right now anybody who wants to subscribe this is the time for the prices, the, the existing prices, including the taxes, is 22420, which is now available at 11210 for one year. And for three years, this is like almost 30K. If you want to access that right away, this is the, uh, the website. This is a super easy thing, auto, auto DESK at 360 promo. Just go to this website, you'll be able to get a hold of the new deal. If you want to reach out to us, just follow Fusion 360 India. If you have some more questions or feedback, you want to get in touch for some collaboration, reach out to me on my personal social media. Once again, I want to thank everyone for joining today, all the speakers. Thank you so much, Deepanka, for taking time. And Ramesh, Anand, Rohit, and Badri, hats off to you for the incredible activity. Thank you so much. Hey, thank, thank you, Varun. All the best. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.